Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at two little card games from the same publisher, Game Factory. These are Gold and Punto. These are both little card games that come in these tiny little tins with a lid that pops but stays attached, which is nice. And they will be pretty different, uh, these two are, from each other. But they, of course, retain some of the same ideas. Very portable, small, simple rules. One of them is going to be an abstract X in a row kind of game, with you playing cards and trying to line up your color pieces. The other one is a memory game where you go, uh, f uh, you know, finding gold and uh, trying to have the most gold recovered when the game is over. Also has a memory element to it. So let me go ahead and give you an overview of these two games. We'll come on back. I'll tell you what I think of them. All right, so first let's take a look at gold here. You're going to give each player playing one of these entrances to a mine. So I've got all five set up. We're going to shuffle up and mess up all the other cards, or you can arrange them, whatever. And then you are ready to begin. So this player will start. On your turn, you are going to reveal two cards. You will reveal those two cards, and depending on what you revealed, something is going to happen. If you reveal two people like this, two miners, then the stronger one is going to beat the weaker one. You're going to put this one back where it was, and this is where you might need some room to kind of arrange things. And this one is removed from the game. Uh, the next player would go, and that's it. And so this player might reveal perhaps uh, this one and uh, this one, let's say. So they pick two, and they'll reveal them at the same time. Okay, not, not what I did there. Uh, and then if one of the two, or both, are TNT then both cards are removed from the game. That player would go. They're going to pick a couple of cards. They're going to reveal those. If one of them is gold and the other one is one of these prospectors, then the prospector, as long as their value can carry this much gold out, is at least the same or lower on the gold, then they will carry that gold out. They are removed, and the gold is given to the player who carried it out. In this case, orange. So they're going to tuck that underneath their mind there. And this continues with you, again, sometimes just putting things back. Say, if both cards happen to be gold, like these two, this guy cannot carry this out. So we could return these to the table somewhere. You have to obviously, again, remember where they are. Because that way, then, if I know I have, I know that this is gold, three gold, and I happen to know one of my value fours is somewhere, I could reveal those two. Let me just go ahead and do that. Somewhere. Where is it? Uh, this guy, okay, so I would do, oh, hey, look at that, yeah, this guy, I can carry it, oh, and the guy is removed, again, he takes the gold and gets out of it. This continues like this until we are down to ten cards, or fewer, at that point, then we go into a secondary phase, which is a little bit different. At that point, with ten or fewer cards, then you just pick one on your turn. At that moment, then, you just are going to grab one, if it's a person, they leave. If it's dynamite, they leave. If it's gold, you take it. This player flipped that. That player flips that and takes it. Takes it. Gone. 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 Nothing. Okay. There we go. And then once that's done, everybody's going to reveal the gold cards they have underneath their, uh, their minds there. Figure out the values, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game. That's gold. I should also mention with two players, if you're playing with two players, each of you is going to get two of these colors. You can remove the other entrance. With any other player count that isn't five, let's say I'm playing with three and these are the cards we are using, the colors. If you ever reveal a character that isn't one of these and you reveal gold on the same flip, basically for a color that isn't in play, you can just take it and then remove the character from the game, okay? So, again, the two colors that aren't represented sort of become wild. If they hit gold, then it's yours. All right, so now let's take a look at Punto here. You are going to separate the cards by colors, obviously on the other side of these. Yeah, and if you give everybody a color, they shuffle them up, put it face down in front of themselves. Then you pick a star player, the youngest player is what the rule book says. They are going to reveal a card and add that card to the center. And the next player will go and they will reveal a card. And for every card they reveal, they have an option. They can put it adjacent to a card already in the display, and you can do that orthogonally or diagonally, this is fine. Or, they could cover a card previously there, no matter the color, 
as long as the new card is bigger than the old one. So this player might go there, I would reveal this one, and perhaps go there. This player is going to go, they're going to cover that up, then this player is going to go here, uh, red's going to go there like so, uh, blue wants to cover that one up, and so on. This continues until somebody gets, in this many players anyway, four in a line. At that point, uh, yeah, let's do that. At that point then, whoever wins it is going to remove the highest card. Let's say I got that. They're going to remove the highest card from the display. They'll set that aside and everybody takes all their cards back. We shuffle up. We start again, beginning with the player after the one who scored. So blue is this one right here. So we would begin with that player. Doing it again until somebody wins twice and they've basically removed two of these cards. At that point, that player wins the game. One important thing to note is that the play area cannot be bigger than six by six. And you define those borders as you play. But as soon as you have six going one way or the other, whatever, you can no longer grow it in either direction. Somebody wins two of these, the game is over. They do get, as every time you win one, again, like I said, it does handicap you a little bit by removing a card from your deck. But you do that twice, you win the entire thing. All right, so there you go. There's that overview. Let's go ahead and talk about these. I'm going to start with a few negative things on both of them, and then we'll end up with positives, and I'll give you uh, my rating for these. Neither one is particularly low or particularly high. These are both nice, fairly average games. I do prefer one over the other, but I got to tell you, it's very close. It was a, it was, it was a hard choice to see which one I liked better, and I think it's very much uh, based on the mood I'm in. To be fair which of these will come out, because they do fill different moments in gaming, or different, again, moods in gaming. So, some negatives that we're going to start with. Gold has, of course, a big memory element. That's not out and out a negative, but it is something you want to be aware of. A lot of folks don't like memory games, and this one is, by and large, a memory game. There is also, for a tiny little card game, there's a decent amount of little rules in this one. How does every combination work? What does every matchup when you draw two cards work? What happens when you draw two people and they're the same value? Uh, there are some things you need to worry about. Also, when you get down to 10 cards, the game changes a little bit. So, more than I would have expected from a, again, a little card game where you flip something and see what happens in this one. So, I, I think that's a, a little bit of a negative, the, the fact that there's more of a teach here than, say, in Punto. This is a very, very easy one to teach. Um, so, that's, a, that's the main couple of things for me that I would say are negatives. Punto, on the other hand here, is, um, for one thing, playing in a bigger, more crowded playing field, a, an abstract luck-driven little card game uh, in which you're lining things up. We've seen a lot of that. Memory games, there's a lot of them, but not many that have this much going on. So the rules in this case sort of work for it. You know, the, the interest. This just feels a little more distinct than Punto does. The look certainly helps. This one is out-and-out out abstract. This one at least tries for a theme, right? And it's pretty successful with that theme. I think it works well. So, um, that's the main one, and uh, then the other thing is that this one, I think, really does not scale well. Not that I think gold scales particularly well. I think it's okay, the way it, the scaling works here. I'm talking about the number of players. But I think Punto, I refuse to play with any player count other than for the maximum player count. Because then you have to start doing weird things. When you're playing with two, each player controls two colors. Hate that. If you're playing with three, every player is given some of the cards from the dead color, and they act as blockers. I really hate that. So you want to play this with four, and in fact, I, I wouldn't want to play. I would out and out refuse to play with any other player count other than four here. Um, another thing which I thought was weird and wasn't expecting, the cards which are very good quality for both of these, by the way. Nice linen finish cards, well printed. They'll stand up to some damage. The fact that they are round in gold 
means they actually fit in here a lot better. I've now had it happen twice where I open up Punto to give it a go and there is a card that gets caught between the bottom of the box and the folded over metal lid on the inside of this tin. And I had to sort of try to shove the card back in. And one, in fact, one of them took a little bit of a beating because it got bent in there. Those are fine. It got bent in there um, and getting it out was, I guess, a problem or it just got pushed down by, by something. I don't know, but it barely fits. The square, the size of the card barely fits in there and they get caught on the edges of the box. That's unfortunate. They could have been a little bit smaller and not su suffered from that issue, but it's probably something they didn't foresee. Um, so that's a little bit of an issue. Now, things I do like, I've already sprinkled in a, a couple of things, card quality and so forth. I like the artwork on both of these, actually. Uh, obviously, gold has more artwork. There's a theme artwork going on there. The other one is, they look like dice printed or, you know, dominoes or something printed on cards. They look good, very stark. The black background works well with those. Um, the Punto game here plays very quickly. I like that. And it is super, super easy to teach, which was surprising. Uh, it's one that you could throw down with just about anybody and get playing in a couple of minutes. It's so portable. It's so easy to teach. I think folks are going to quickly take to it, understand what it is they're trying to accomplish. And I really like the very intuitive sort of rubber banding or catch-up mechanism that it does. This idea of if you do get four in a line, you remove your strongest card, set it aside to know you've scored a point, shuffle up everybody's, you know, everybody takes their cards back, shuffles them up, and you go again. By doing that, you are removing one of that player's strongest cards from their deck. And it's a subtle thing on the one hand, but it's a very obvious thing on the other. Remove one of their biggest cards, their biggest opportunity for covering something up. So that works out nicely. I really enjoyed that. The main thing that gold has going for it is thematic and just sort of pure funny moments, fun theme. It allows you to get into this whole yee I flip over a guy and he steals a bunch of gold, or I flip over two people and my guy takes out your guy. Ha <laughs> ha, get out of here. There's a lot of that. In, on the other one, uh, in the other one, the Punto game, there's a little bit of that feeling of, I'm covering up your stuff, but it doesn't feel as, it doesn't feel as tangible because the cards are all abstracted. In this one, I can tie a theme around it. I can tie some smack talk around it. Because that dude works for me, and he's stealing that gold. Or he is taking out your guy, or he threw some dynamite in your face, some TNT. So you can sort of get into the theme a little bit more in this one. And again, I just think it feels a little more distinct in the, the big picture here. A little pocket memory game with a couple of interesting rules. Maybe a couple too many rules, yes. But it just stands out a little more than line things up in, in this grid and score four in a row. Do that twice. But again, I, I rate these about the same, uh, really, at the end of the day. Uh, if I only had to pick one, that's a tough call. It really does depend on who I'm playing with, who I'm teaching. If I'm worried about the teach, I'm going with this one. It's so easy. If I'm worried about something maybe they haven't experienced or I'm worried about you know them not liking memory games, I'm going with this one. But if I'm picking one that I might stick in my collection because it stands out a little bit more from the rest of the games that are in there, I'm going with gold. There are more games like this than there are games like this, in my opinion. That's what I've found to be true. So, for me, Punto is going to get a 5 out of 10. It's an average game. I would be happy to play it. Just not one I think I'm going to be bringing out a lot. But this could be a nice, you know, stocking st a stuffer or a introductory game for someone. A nice little gift. 5 out of 10. And then gold, I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's got some rules that you're going to have to digest, but it's a fun game. And there's just more laughter in this, I've found. A little sillier, a little kookier, 
Really not any more luck than in this one. You're still top decking a card here and getting what you get. But I just found it, it stood out a little bit more for me. So gold is going to get a 6 out of 10. And that's going to do it, folks, for me, for these two little games from Game Factory. Nice little packages. These would make great gifts, you know. So check them out. That's going to do it. My name is Z Garcia. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.